you know, I went to the Sylvester <laughs> tribute a few months back, and it was it was the most amazing experience that I've had dancing this year um, because we were there in these 47, 50, 60 year old bodies, not trying to dance like 20 year olds, but dancing in this kind of present flesh. Um, and that's the thing, we can, we don't have to dance like that anymore, um, but we can still you know, be in the collective groove. Um, and it's important that we are. And so let me just read. Um, and then we're gonna just rotate um, do a rotation of readings and, and see how long we can go. Um, in the beginning, God created the dance floor in the DJ booth. <laughs> now the beat was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the breaks. And God said, let there be disco. <laughs> and there was disco music. God saw that this disco music was good and he separated the house from the disco. God called the East Coast house garage and the West Coast he called warehouse. And there was evening dance and there was morning dance, the first day of house. And God said, let there be an expanse between the clubs to separate club from club. So God made the expanse and separated the club under the expanse from the club above it and it was so. God called the expanse Deep House. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the club under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground Tea Dance. <laughs> and the gathered waters he called Sweat, and God saw that this was good. Then God said, let the DJ produce groove, seed bearing groove, and dance on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced dance, DJs bearing seed according to their kinds, and, producing, and producers bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the ceiling sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years to come. God made two great lights, the disco ball light to govern the center ceiling sky and the lesser laser light to govern the DJ booth. <laughs> he also made the stars. And God said, let the sweat and the tears and the tears and the drip from every living creature that dances come forth. And God looked around and said, it was all good. I only feel short when I'm around Marvin or read after him. Hello, good evening, my name is Lorenzo Herrera Lozano. It is an honor to be here and it is an honor to be with you and to be honoring Sylvester. I was at, a, I was at Esta Noche the first time I heard Sylvester. I, uh, it was a Sunday after I, I stopped, being, um, stopped studying to be a Pentecostal minister. Um, I went from there to Esta Noche. <laughs> And although by the time I got to Esta Noche, it was no longer the Esta Noche that, that other folks rolled through, but it was, still, it was still a different Esta Noche than the one people rolled through today. And uh, so this is, this is an honor to, to the girls who took care of me when I was 20 and snuck into Esta Noche, not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> Raised by drag queens. Mama taught me good manners, never to chew with my mouth open, to speak when spoken to, to do as she said, not as she did. Mama even told me about the birds and the bees, but never about the birds and the birds or the bees and the bees. She told me to never have sex with a girl until I married one, so I followed her advice and had sex with men instead. <laughs> but she didn't teach me about that. All I learned about men, I learned from drag queens. 
After Mama had done her part to raise me, I went on to be raised by the star stars to be or retired stars of the stage of Esta Noche. It was there that I learned that size matters only if he doesn't know what he's doing. I learned that swallowing and spitting were two different things, but not opposed. I learned that life seen through a sequence dress is different, and love and commitment can mean so many things to so many people. I learned that tight jeans didn't make you available, just a center of attention. There I learned that to be brown and take on a white name as a performer was an abomination to the Virgen Maricona. That one should never admit to flirting or being a bottom. And that sometimes the past can be erased nearly as fast as seven layers of nylons and duct tape. Magandang gabi, good evening. I'm Joel Tan, and I'm also Sister Baba Ganesh of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And so let me just say the connection to Sylvester for me um, um, uh, right now is very biographical because I just reread that beautiful um, biography by that wonderful sociologist. And it's so clear to me now, reading it the fourth time, um, why I identify personally so much with it coming from LA, coming up here, and being completely dazzled by all of the woo woo um, magic. Um, and then eventually, you know, to cut a long story short, finding my way to the sisters in the same way that Sylvester um, found his way to the coquettes. And all of the amazing potential of that, and really to kind of bring and honor Jose Munoz in, in the ways that Sylvester and queerness is really about being in the future. So to that end, I feel like those are just some of the things that tie me to our queer titan. And so to that end, I, um, I wanted to share um, little bits of um, a manuscript that I put together um, with Honey Sound System and um, a local artist, Daniel Leon. And it's a walking meditation. It's a guided tour through the Castro, and it's the Castro Mecca procession. It's downloadable. It's free on the sister's website, and there's a map. But this is a guided tour that isn't your straight-ahead tour, but more of an impressionistic, poetic guide through the Castro and through time. And the time was 1979, and the music was Sylvester. And it was when our founding members walked out of their apartments in East, on Easter Saturday um, of 1979 and decided to go out and terrorize the clones wearing nuns' habits. <clears throat> Mecca, Holy Land, Castro, Queerdo. This walk is rebirth. This walk is queer devotion. You are walking, breathing, slowing down time. Let all distractions melt away. Rebirth. When we walk, we are reborn with each new step. No end. No end to the journey. No end, no end. Never. How can the heart and love ever stop opening? If you love me, you won't just die once. In every moment, you will die into me to be reborn into this new love. Die, your way begins. On the other side, become the sky. Take an ax to the prison wall. Escape. Walk out like someone suddenly born into color. Do it now. Born into color. Born into color, born the beginning, reborn to begin again. Dying into light dies the end to die again, rebirth, Easter. Born into color, born the beginning, born to begin again. How do you die? How do you die again? Why? Are you reborn? What is your purpose? What does it matter? 
San Francisco opens her golden gates to queerdos and hookers from every planet to begin again, to die again. Rebirth, Mecca, Holy Land, Castro, queerdo. This is called um, the Quinceañera Rapture. <clears throat> At first we laugh, Paquito sweating, lips puckered as to kiss, eyebrows furrowed at the center, a study in boyish focus, stomping, sliding, spinning, precociously coordinated. He looks like a mini gallant, troubling the hardwood of the tiny Elks Lodge dance floor bow tie unraveled, cummerbund off kilter, hair flattened blue-black wet on his rounded forehead, eyes burning with his own salt. Damn. I thought Paquito just sat in corners, orchestrating epic cross-genre action figure brawls, Chewbacca body slamming Batman, Barbie filleting the living shell off a Ninja Turtle's back with a Power Ranger's sword. But this? All the eyes are on him now, even the surly Chambelanes stare. Paquito notes the unwanted attention, retreats to the rustling taffeta forests of Damas, faces the wall, and continues his communion. The DJ watches, smiles, give thanks, gives thanks for his muse, searches the crate and finds the right disc, drops it on the two, fades out the funk, and slides into something smoother, something iridescent. A voice slaloms through the song, now man, now woman, now him, now orgasm. Paquito goes liquid, mounted by the music now, baby boy brow furrowed, mouth slack, brain checked out. DJ on a contact high, fathoms deep in a groove. Song follows song, sure as breath, DJ's tears pass for sweat, child is a marvel. Finds spaces between the beats and slides in, dancing sometimes, double time, sometimes half time, stubby fingers flare, l flared like a Sevillana fan. The boy finds his hips and his rump, and he unfolds in the strobes. 12 o'clock now, party's over. Paquito's ruffles wilt from the wet. The DJ packs his gear, collects his check, a great V of sweat down his back. The boy's too hot to come down yet. He shuffles in his corner, echoes ricochet between his ears. Papi takes the boy in his furred arms, gazes at the small, beloved, but suddenly unfamiliar face. He hoists the boy into the car seat. Just two miles down the highway, the boy is out, loose as a fresh corpse, heart beating out a dreamtime beat, body exhaling music like steam. Thank you. So this, this poem um, is for someone um, who recently passed, um, and I knew him mostly from, from a dance floor. Um, and you know, if, you're, if you know me, um, you know I have a whole cosmology built around the dance floor um, with the DJ as preacher and the regulars as attendants who you know, help usher in the spirit. And, the blessing of the space with the baby powder. Um, <laughs> you know, I, be, I believe in it. Um, and um, this is for someone who recently um, passed. Was unsettled by the long, awkward hug that the song gave him when he walked onto the dance floor. Has danced between here and there and nowhere and somewhere before, but not since he heard that the boy had passed. Somehow knows what to do when the song come and you need to hold it up. House music means we are not so pulled up as not to be able to break down. House music means that one day everything will weep and you gotta stay ready cause one day song will greet you not with baby powder but with tissue. Those who enter will become those who are waiting to go in. 
Song usually like to throw us about like bingo balls in a caller's cage. But not this night, his night. He swayed in one old low wave. Something was up, knew this was for the one who left this world's twirl, knew too new to be a seance, knew who was a ghost and who wasn't, knew we don't say I'm sorry for your loss, here we say get your life or if you go in, I will hold your skirt down. House music is second line and I'll fly away. House music, Paul bears, ushers, eulogizes, enters, and commits back to the earth. House music means we are our own quiet hour and our bodies a repast. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Club Taboo, I ask that you please direct your attention to the DJ booth above as we review the dance floor etiquette. There are six speakers in this room. Take a minute to locate the speaker closest to you. Note that the nearest speaker may be behind you. Count the number of people dancing between you and this speaker. Should the dance floor suddenly experience pressure loss, stay calm and listen for instructions from the DJ. House music will always drop down from above whenever you need air. Place the beats over your mouth and nose. Pull the straps of house music to tighten it. If you do not know where the house music strips if you do not know where the house music straps are located, raise your hands. If you're dancing with the children, make sure that the house music is on you before attempting to help the children. In the unlikely event of some drunk girl bumping into the DJ's turntables and the music stops, do not evacuate. Carry on with your carry on. <laughs> In the unlikely event of a record skipping, house music has life rafts located under your seat and feet. Strobe and spotlights will lead you to your closest groove. While we wait for takeoff, please take a moment to tarry. Sometimes, death is like a stretch mark on your ass. You gotta really be looking over your shoulder hard in the mirror and twisting your waist to see it. Six. Been released from many a prison, got many a promotion, won many a bet, stacked much paper. Lived to tell the tale, escape within an inch of my life. Brass ring caught on the last go round, secret kept money, stay hidden, just fair enough for the bus. Snake eyes look away, punch swung, hit nothing but air. Last round of drinks bought by somebody else, fish biting instead of fighting. Royal flush come right on time, yell bingo before anybody else. Man with a job say I'm just right, man with a hundred dollar bill say he just might. Rain stay away from my new suit, lawsuit drop, spare key still under the mat. Enough salt and pepper for this fried piece of chicken wrapped in a tin foil and the oven waiting in a can of Pap's blue ribbon hidden behind the gone bad milk. The lights stay green. Parking meter already full of quarters. Mr. Charlie looked the other way. Empty tank still got room. Empty tank still. Bleeding heart and a good preacher. Mean dog don't smell no fear. Poker face make gunman think twice. She take your nine in her eight item line. Bullet tell you a secret. DJ keep playing the song. You paid all this money to hear him spin. Everybody but your family see you dancing with your arms around some boy. We are not math men. House music means if you dance, you are never happy counting your blessings. Um, so being a, being a good sister, I, I was thinking about the process of canonization. Um, and so I went to Wikipedia and I, I really thought about <laughs> through the steps of what it is to be beatified, to be this and that, to be considered blessed. And it was so beautiful. It's, I mean, it's probably that again, that Catholic of me in me, but it was so gorgeous to think about Sylvester in that context and so important, especially since that was the time and he was one of the figures and titans that brought in queer, I believe. LGBT to queer. Us Gen Xers did that. All right. <clears throat> now, so you're on the walk with me and um, queerdos and hookers. Let me just say this. That last piece um, also had a bit from Rumi 
And this piece will have a bit from Reynaldo Arenas and um, Herb Kane. So, <clears throat> all the saints. Queerdos and hookers, welcome to your holy land. Mecca, holy land, gastro, queerdo. This walk is leaving and heading toward. This walk is queer sanctuary. This walk is leaving and heading toward sanctuary. Have you ever just wanted to leave? Have you ever imagined life somewhere else? Are you seeking refuge? Are you here? Have you ever imagined life somewhere else? Have you ever lied about where you came from? So now what happens when we get there? Will I find a life? Will I find true love? Will I find peace? Will I meet my end? Oh, so that's what happens when we get there. Sanctuary. Have you ever just wanted to leave? From the doorman. Years ago, Juan fled his native Cuba in a boat and settled in the United States. He was 17 then, and his entire past life had been left behind. Humiliations and warm beaches, fierce enemies and loving friends, whom the very persecutions had made even more special. Left behind was slavery, but the complicity of the night as well in the cities made to measure of his restlessness, unbounded horror, but also human quality, a state of mind, a sense of brotherhood in the face of terror. All things that just like his own way of being were alien here. Mecca, Holy Land, Castro. Querdo, you are walking, breathing, slowing down time. From the words of Herb Cain, who are the sisters of perpetual indulgence? For the delectation of historians a century hence, sister missionary position explains that we are an order of gay men dedicated to the promulgation of universal joy and the expiation of stigmatic guilt. We have 17 sisters and two novices who spread joy and put on theatrical presentations. Some of us do have regular jobs to support our habits. <laughs> and with that sly pun, we slide off in the direction of the nearest no host bar singing along with Charles Pierce, San Francisco, open your golden gates. This walk is leaving and heading toward. This walk is queer sanctuary. This walk is leaving and heading toward Mecca, Holy Land, Castro. Queerdo. Have you ever been in love? You know, that kind of love that just makes you want to squeeze them, and kiss them, and squeeze them some more, get sweaty with them on the dance floor, write poetry with them. That's the kind of love I have for Marvin K. White. I would like to offer what I call a poetic lap dance to Marvin K. White. So what you need to do is look at him the entire time. And I'm not much to translate, but I will translate one word, um, and that is the word "hoto," um, and that means um, it means faggot. Um, in I'm going to say Mexican Spanish, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know that other because I know we all have our own versions, and I think so. Anyway. I don't see no dollar bills out.
You bring out the hoto in me. <laughs> the Maria Felix eyebrows are sexually confused macho the tecate and lime. The Saturday morning shock of hickeys and phone numbers, the you are the one I would hold hands in public with while cruising down my old barrio. Allow you other men in bed still believing promises of monogamy and forever. Definitely, definitely for us. You bring out the Sylvester in me, the disco in me, the limp wrist, the tight jeans and spiked hair in me, the velvet dress on a Sunday morning, unshaved legs with white nylons in me, the spine of Frida in me, the butcher coyo chowki in me, the screaming supermarket baby in me, the government cheese in me, the, <laughs> the fetish of tattoo doves on a bare chest in me, the J pronounces Y as me, the greasy mullet-like wavy hair in me, the Chihuahua desert pecans and red meat in me, the love of death in me. You know you do. Oh, you know you do. You bring out the drag queen in me, the perpetual attitude in me, the Juan Gabriel trip and fall in me, the <laughs> Rivera-inspired Katrina in me, the gay bar bathroom bump in me, the bidi bidi bum bum in me, the, <laughs> the Oakland 3 a.m. God, what did we do at 3am in Oakland? I won't tell. The fondue line on the dance floor in me. Papacito, my sweet obsession. I am the psycho who stalks your home at night. Make sure you're there when you say so. I would find a man just to cheat on him with you. I want to bottom top flip it and reverse it with you. I want to commit unforgivable sins and bask in them. I want to trade Grey Goose for Boone's Farm, Coke for Crack, Banana Republic for The Gap. Me sacas lo maricón en mi, y te gusta chulo. You bring out the ojo giving celoso in me, the I'm gonna curve if you don't stop staring at you in me, the high hill stabbing esta noche diva in me. The blank stares at football games in me, the Texas syphilis breakout in me, the AIDS pandemic in me, the out magazine never seen Mexican cover boy in me. I'd mispronounce my name for you. <laughs> Light a cigarette and watch how others lust for you, ready to burn whoever gets too close. I am the excessive drinker, the insatiable size queen, the sex addicted promiscuity. You burn out the Superficial lust at first sight in me, the vile jealousy in me, the voyeur and exhibitionist in me, the leather daddy in me. I want to be your loca, only your papi. Be my papi. I want to show you the way Jotos do it, the way we were meant to. Um, I'm going to read for you a 10-minute excerpt of a short story. Um, the story is called Fat Cookie. And um, <clears throat> this is a part of a collection, an ever-growing collection of uh, semi-autobiographical short stories I have about uh, growing up on uh, migrant farm worker camps in San Juan Batista uh, down in San Benito County. Um, and uh, this is kind of in the middle of the story, so I'll give you a little bit of context. And uh, a Fat Cookie is, is basically a... Uh, she's about 15, and she's a big girl, and she's a bully. And like a lot of bullies, she's also very charismatic. And I and the other children uh, who live in that labor camp are kind of in her thrall. Uh, and she terrorizes us, and we keep following her uh, into whatever terror she, she creates for us, because uh, bullies are charismatic that way sometimes. And uh, that's the one other piece of information I should say is that she had just had a huge, uh, very physical fight with her mom a couple of days earlier. Um, so this is where we pick up. Two days later, me, Sylvie, Olga, Lila, and Caesar are hanging out by the canal, trying to burn a tire to roast weenies and have a weenie feast. 
when Cookie walks up with a big smile on her face. We haven't seen her since the fight with her mom, but she looks okay. The bruise on her forehead's not too bad. Scratches are no big deal, and she has her hair down. Whoa, Cookie has a lot of hair when it's not in a braid. Most of all, I can't believe how happy Cookie looks. Look what my mom got me, everybody. She's holding out a fancy radio with a handle like a suitcase. Wow, that's nice, I say. It's a Panasonic, says Cookie. Does it work, asks Caesar. Of course it works, says Cookie. I thought your mom was mad at you, I said. She was. Then her stupid boyfriend Manny and her got into a big fight and I took her side and he left in the middle of the fight and now we made up and this is my prize. <laughs> Does it play good music? Asked Lila. Only the best music. Does it play the hustle? Asked Caesar. Psh, all the time. Every day I can hear the hustle five or six times. You guys want to hear it? Everybody says yes. Cookie says, come on then, let's play American Bandstand over by the tractor barn where there's no adults to ruin everything. Bring your weenies, we can cook them with my lighter. <laughs> <clears throat> it's kind of dark in the tractor barn, I don't like it, says Olga. Come on, says Fat Cookie, I'll grab my big flashlight and we can use it for a spotlight, eh? Wow, Fat Cookie's really nice today. Cookie runs over to her house and comes back with her big boxy camping flashlight. Everybody's all excited and we march out towards the barn and we make a list of top 10 songs to hear on the radio. The Hustle, of course, and Kung Fu Fighting, Seasons in the Sun, Tell Me Something Good, Smoking in the Boys Room. And then we get into a fight about I Honestly Love You. The girls like it, but me and Caesar and Cookie hate it. At the barn, Cookie grabs a hoe and uses the handle like a giant pencil, drawing big boxes in the dust. What are you doing, Cookie? says Sylvie. I'm getting ready for you guys to play American Bandstand. How does it work? I asked. Everybody has to dance, but you have to stay in your box. I'll be the judge and pick the best dancer. The most best dancer will get a special grand prize, okay? Everybody nods their heads, and Cookie explains the next steps. Now get in your boxes, and I'll turn on the music. Only the best dancers will have a chance, so you better shake it till you break it. <laughs> Cookie turns on the radio. It's some dude talking. Boo. She changes the channel. We hear cumbias. Boo. Country music. Double boo. <laughs> Finally, we get to Big Daddy Mario V on K-Top. He's doing top 40. Cookie turns the volume all the way up. It's loud. This radio is boss, man. The first song we hear from Big Daddy is the locomotion. Everybody likes it. Dance, you kids, screams Fat Cookie. Everybody looks at everyone else, but no one does nothing. I said, dance, retards, dance. <laughs> then we start to giggle. Fat Cookie walks up behind Caesar and smacks him on the head. It's a really good slap. You can hear how much it hurt. Don't, says Caesar. Well, then dance, retard. All of you, dance. And everybody starts dancing the locomotion. Lila's still clowning around, and Cookie kicks her in the ankle. Lila kneels to the ground, crying and rubbing her ankle. Ouch, she says. This is not a game, says Cookie, bending down so her face is right above Lila's. This is American Bandstand, so you better stay in your box, and you better dance good. So everybody starts dancing, but maybe not so good. Olga's the best. Fat Cookie keeps watching her and she says, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, whenever she does a fancy step. Then Cookie shines the flashlight on Olga. She clicks it on and off and everybody starts hooting and shouting. And when the song's over, everybody claps. Cookie says, round one winner is Olga. Olga is the world lightweight champ. Olga turns around and shakes her skinny hips at us. Big Daddy Mario V starts talking about the next song. He says it's going up the charts like a rocket. As soon as it starts, everybody cheers. It's Kung Fu Fighting, the number one greatest favorite of all the kids in the camp. Everybody starts Kung Fu Fighting, jumping and punching and kicking and going wha when the song goes wha. And the competition is strong now because this is the best song. My face is red and I'm sweating so hard it's getting in my eyes and hurting me. I just wipe it away and I keep on dancing. Cookie shines the light on me. I feel like I look good. I feel like I have the five fingers of death and the dragon kick too. Fat Cookie is cheering and laughing. Everybody's relieved that Cookie's happy and not hitting anybody. 
pretty good, everybody, says Cookie. Lila, stop copying everybody. Make up your own damn steps or I'll kick you again. This is champion dancing, everybody. Now we're dancing harder than ever, and Cookie's really exciting. She says, this is better than American Bandstand. This is Mexican American Bandstand. Everybody goes, woo, all right, and right on, sister. And we clap real loud, and Caesar's dancing super hard now. His bony elbows and arms are kung fuing all over the place. He punches and he kicks, and the flashlight beam follows his face. He pushes out his lips and looks out the side of his eyes like Bruce Lee. Then he pretends to dance with nunchucks, and it's almost like you can see the nunchucks from the way he's moving. The song finishes up, and we're all breathing through our mouths like we just ran a race. This is a very hard decision, says Cookie. There are many, many champion dancers here at Mexican American Bandstand. But the winner is Caesar. Caesar pumps his arms in the air. He does a fancy double kick and takes a bow, and everybody cheers for him. Now, it's time for the grand prize, says Cookie. She sticks her hand into her pocket and she pulls out a teeny tiny purse. She unzips it and sticks her fingers in. She pulls out a 50 cents coin. 50 cents? Wow, says Sylvie. That's right, says Cookie. This is for the big prize. Now let's see what's next on the new radio. Big Daddy puts on Rock Your Baby. This, I love this song. This is a great song. Our dancing is great. Cookie is happy. Everyone's happy. That's what I think. But as soon as we start dancing, Cookie starts to complain again. No, listen to the song, stupids. You have to dance with soul. Put some soul into it. I look over at Caesar and Olga, and we just shrug our shoulders and keep dancing. I don't know how to put some soul in it. What does that even mean? <laughs> I look around, and to be honest, I don't think nobody knows how to do that. Cookie looks at us, shaking her head like she can't believe what she's seeing. She puts her fingers on her forehead like we're giving her a headache. Then Cookie puts the flashlight on the floor, steps into the square, and starts to dance. At first, she looks kind of goofy, just standing there like a tree, hardly moving at all. I guess she's listening. And then something changes, and Cookie lifts up her round face towards the ceiling, and it's like the, the song is taking over, making her lighter, like an astronaut on the moon. Her big hips and shoulders are moving, and her tiny hands are drawing butterflies in the air. Everybody stops dancing and just stares. She sees us staring, and she don't care. She keeps on dancing. And her hair looks so pretty, the way it's moving and whipping across her face. This is boss, man. Sometime, sometimes Cookie looks like she's dancing with an invisible dude, singing him the song, looking at him like she's in love. And then she looks kind of sad and kind of happy at the same time. Other times, the invisible dude disappears. She's just dancing for herself. She doesn't look at her feet. She just moves. It's just her and the music. At the end of the song, Cookie's bent over, and her hair is hanging in front of her face like a black curtain. Her arms are open like two bent wings. She is breathing hard, and her back goes up and down every time she breathes. The song finishes, and she just stays there, and no one says nothing. Cookie stands up and pushes her hair back. Everyone's cheering for her, and her cheeks get red. So who won the 50 cents, says Caesar? I did, says Cookie. I dance better than anybody. I won. I'll see you kids later. I got a big life to live. <laughs> Cookie grabs her radio and walks towards the houses, moving her hips to the music. She thinks she's so big, says Sylvie. She thinks she is better, but she's not, says Caesar. I'm surprised she didn't eat our weenies, I say. Everybody laughs. She's not so big, says Olga. She's just mean and ugly and fat but she sure can't dance. And we all start to laugh because it's true. Thank you. Thank you. 
so I feel like I have to do some due diligence um, with Lorenzo. You inspire me to stop lights and hot combs and railroad breaks. I think you might just be the first brown boy in my American league. You're my invention, and I am putting a patent on this thing we are doing. I am copywriting these words my tongue pushes into your ear. You make me want to tattoo another teardrop below my left eye, redo my eyebrows with a sharpie and see how high my bangs can go. You are the first wave of braceros planting seeds across my back. Yours are the brown raindrops coating this land, washing away the toxic ashes of other loves. My love, turn my land, make it ours again. I want to make some black history with you. I want to be your Harriet Tubman and let you ride my underground railroad to freedom. I want you to pass out in my arms exhausted. I want you to lose your scent in my rivers. I want you to come and wait inside my safe house till slave catchers lose all track of you. I want to make some black history with you. Be the first man to reach your North Pole. I want to find a million and one things to do with a peanut black bin. I want to make you proud to be Negro. I want to make some Chicano history with you. Be your Miguel Hidalgo and scream independence down your throat. Let you swim across my river defiant. I want you to reclaim your name in my lips. I want to be your asylum. Want you to stop on these borders till minute and remember they don't belong. I want to make some Chicano history with you. Be the first man to call you his aslan. I want to create new words to describe you. Roll my tongue three times to invoke you. Show you how my H <laughs> is silent and my R's are heavy. I want to make some black history with you. Sing songs about overcoming you, and I shall. I want to lead our movement back to my Africa, where we bow down to trees and skies. Oh, God, I want you to sit between my knees while I find a chemical that sizzles the genetic code out of our kinks and have a million-dollar Madam CJ kind of idea just by looking into your head. I want to make some Chicano history with you. Rewrite that cumbia, admiring the beauty of your ass, porque es lindo tu cucu. <laughs> Want to carry you back to my home, lie back to mi tierra, show you how I learned what I know with the stem of an onion. Hmm. Want to dance like the devil over desert plains, make you thirsty just by watching, quenched by the salt of my tongue. Carry you back to Texas over my shoulder, be that pipi la guard from the stones of my past. Come to haunt me one more time. I want to make some black history with you. I want you to beg for mercy, Thurgood style, in my Supreme Court. I want to write and rewrite and overturn legislation for you. I want to be your black antiquity and watch Saharan sun soak into your back. I want to make some Chicano history with you. Write your manifesto, be the Joaquin of my movimiento, half family outings at the nearest rest stop. Remind me how we're more black and Indio than white and Spanish. Denounce that Hispanic bullshit. As you make my ground pregnant. I want to birth more mestizos with you. I want to bring forth a yam for you. Cook nopales and chacales for you. Something sweet. Something moist. Something red. Something rough. See, I want to make some black history with See, you. See, I want to make some Chicano history with, with you. you. I want to run to Texas. I want to run through public classrooms. Every Juneteenth. Every Cinco de Mayo. And remind you that you're free. And remind folks it's not independence. I want to sit down and be Rosa Parks for you. I want to be your Chavez. I want to be the seat for you. Make this world safe for you. And you can ride the front of my bus. You be the Guadalupe who guides and carries me. I want you to take a hammer in your hand. Once I've been beaten once again. And be the tunnel through my mountain. Be the gentle croon that makes my hips sway. I want to take you back in time. Before reggaeton y rock en español. Before hip hop. When pretty men galloped away into the sunset. Before rhyme. I want to gallop my way into you. Like Busta. Una vez. I musta. Otra vez. Got off course. Porque ves. But I'm hung like a. Esta vez. <laughs> Listen. I just. I just want to make some black history with wanna you. Want to make some Chicano history with, with you. you. I want you to come back into my village. I want you to cruise back into my barrio. Proud and pierced and scarred. My neck, my name sketched around your neck. I want everything you went out and gathered and brought home. Airbrushed on the hood of your car below Selena or Zapata. 
I want to make something out of it. I want you to put everything in my pot and let me make you your first gumbo. I want you to lick me from your fingers and I will make something that will stick to our ribs like legacy, like family, like a brown mama making little brown babies for you. I want to verse you in some things I think you should know. Makiba, Ropes, and Du Bois. I want you to make some noise like that choir up in Harlem with all them cute little boys. I want to be the worst part of you. I want to come visit you in jail, hock my gold chain for bail. I want to sit in the middle seat of your troca. Like, like my mama making sure girls knew who was that ruka. Want to give ojo to any cabron who dares eye you. Flash the razor blade I hide in my chongo. Because you are my man. And all those ways I've been taught are unhealthy. Tell you I'd die without you. I'd cut anyone trying to get close to you. Or if my politics overcame me, I'd at least throw some Catholic guilt into you. <laughs> the kind even Jesus can't remove. The kind that made daddy buy mom more Jafra Pele's shoes and home interior. I want my home to be your interior. I want to be the corn in your maseca. Glide between your fingers, stick underneath your nails. Want you to come home every Thanksgiving and eat your mama's stuffing. Oh, hell. See, si, papi. Let me be your prison rape. Build me a house on Mongo your Street. Your failed escape. Where people look like you and me. The bullet aimed at your neck, Snape. Where no one answers our doors. I want to be your mama in the kitchen burning rice. Where no one knocks before entering. And you can be my daddy on the corner shooting dice. Where having a papa and a daddy makes no one blink. See, I just want to make some black history with you. See, I just want to make Chicano history with you. Be the Atlantic in your middle passage. Be the warrant that finally gets you. And swallow you. And free you. Before they slay or slave you. I want to be the America built on the back of you. Be brothers in the Castro who still won't talk to you. I want to be your invention. I want to patent this thing we do. I want, the, I want to copyright these words my tongue pushes into your ear. I'll, sponge your, I'll expunge your three strikes like that fancy lawyer did for Uncle Tony. We will stand beside the founding mothers of this country, our country, not the red, white, and blue, nor the green, white, and red, for both have denied us. This land, our land, is an ancient land. I will learn to run through, my can through canyons like my ancestors carrying Chile Pasado and my love. I want the world to know. And I shall feed you. I was here with you. And I shall continue. Making some black history making Chicano history with you. Who wants to make some Asian American studies with me? <laughs> Meet me outside. And speaking of, I am um, a newlywed enjoying fully the benefits of adultery. It is a fantastic world now. <laughs> I keep thinking what it would have been like um, if Sylvester had been around for marriage equality. And I'm going to have to have it up. Acknowledge my sister Dharma Gittin over there. Put my collar on <laughs> to read this. And I'm going to show you a little bit of nun technology. It's for the nun on the go. <laughs> you know. I am Sister Baba Ganesh. Queerdos and hookers, welcome to your holy land. Mecca, holy land. Castro, queerdo. This walk is communion. This walk is queer sanctuary. This walk is pride. This walk is rebirth. This walk is manifestation. Communion, this holy place, place of tears, place of mourning. Do you miss them? God knows I do. Is it really nothing, nothing? When it finally happens, how bad will it hurt? There are spirits protecting me. How much of that is bullshit? 
What if it's nothing, nothing? So that now is everything? Do they ever come around? How shall we honor them? I think we should dance. I think we should summon the dead, summon the murdered, the lynched and dragged, the plundered and damned. For in this new age, their vengeance is joy, deep joy. Dance is weaponry. Joy is victory. The past, a warm, sure breeze at our backs. Then we're spirits. The past, a warm, sure breeze at our backs. Then we're spirits. Don't look back too much. And always place your bets on dancing. From the reading of the first mysteries of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Don the habit, we white grease on flesh, color in gems, top white, glitter covers all. White grease on flesh, artist, trickster, render, sister, colors and gems top white, ages back we were, and here and now again. Artist, trickster, render, sister, swim with, but we are not of clones. Ages back we were, and here and now again. Trick queens, Psychic hooker, tender of herb, hydras the lot. Swim with, but we are not of clones. Time we eat on open palms. Suckle we from Father Shiva's breast. Trick babies, psychic whores, tender of herb, hydras the lot. Nuns, blue, Green, yellow, orange, mothers defined by deed, not yammer. Time we eat on open palms, suck a weave from Father Shiva's breast. On that day, a sweet three, then the next day, four, we're bored with clones. Nuns, blue, green, yellow, orange, mothers defined by deed, not yammer. They became heroes eventually, but first they were just trouble. On that day is sweet three, the next day four, we're bored with clones. Lips grip cigar and machine gun terror, they blazed into the streets. They became heroes eventually, but first they were trouble. Pom-pom skits grip the soft ball, games and fairy recruits. Lips grip cigar and machine gun terror, they blaze into the streets. This is the first mystery of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Pom-pom skits grip the softball games and fairy recruits. Om gam ganapate nama. This is the first mystery of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Colors and gems top white. Om gam ganapate nama. Don the habit we on the habit. How's everybody holding up? Good, good. This is, um, this is called Patty's Song, um, and it's, it's written for a contemporary of Sylvester's Patty LaBelle, um, but tonight it's, it's Sylvester's song. She sings to us, we who first called her diva, the first and last girl, the go girl, miss girl. 
We who watched her hair dress and pumps fly. We who watched drag queens try and try and try to sink their lips into her song, wondering when their birds didn't make it over the rainbow, what went wrong? She sings to us. Make us go home and wish our real mothers acted like that. See, we have watched her wreck the children, give them grief, make them sit back in utter disbelief. You have just been Sylvester-sized. Watch you go home thinking, maybe I should do something different with my hair, maybe make the legs in my pants flare, show some proud bone in my back bare, walk around without care. OK, enough of this rhyme, like I said. She sings to us. Out of the stereos and televisions we own, we hold our TV ha antenna hands until she sings to us clear and cable concert like pushing her song deep into our ears with her surround sound speaker lips she coos. If only you knew how much I do. Ooh, that's when we go up, turn the track up, do our best, Patty, back up, watch the CDs, stack up, listen for the song that will surely send us over. We hold our cries tight in the fist of our eyes. She will not do us, not like this, but she calls the tears out by name. Peter, Kevin, Larry, Donald, Asoto, Essex, she, part this world and part next, sweeps, weeps into herself like she is ocean and they a river. We have been holding on to rivers and didn't even know it. You see, she sings to us. We who need lullabies and anthems to release our rivers, she sings to us. We who live in that place where her voice goes, she sings to us. We who pride ourselves on our 12 egg potato salad, she sings to us, we who need somebody to name our tears in a song, she sings to us. So that is the reading portion of this evening. Um, you know, I, I, say, you know, I say all the time that you know, we, we have to tell our stories. Um, because history has a really bad habit of leaving us out, getting us wrong, or marginalizing us. We have to, we have to tell our stories. Um, and we have so many ways and opportunity to do it with social media, and you know, there's still the, the work of archiving our histories. Um, if you have that box under your bed with those photos and that letter, you know, make sure you know, they're designated to go somewhere you know, um, you know, talk to the archivists here in the Bay Area. You know, we have to make sure that we save, you know, our history. Um, and it doesn't seem important, you know, but, you know, if you have a, a matchbook cover from the slot, you know, um, I heard about that. That's not my um, history. Um, but it is, it is important. Um, and I want to thank my readers again. Uh, my friends, my boys, my bristers, you know. I want to thank the library and Karen Suntime. Yeah. And I want to thank you for, for hanging out, for listening to stories, for continuing to tell yours. And look out for us, um, you know, Marvin K. White on Facebook. And, you know, y'all want to say anonymous? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>